Portrait photography is a collaboration between the photographer and the subject. So when I take a photo, I am only 50% of the equation. The person I am photographing is the other 50%. This is why, when possible, I try to spend time and build up trust with the subject before I pick up my camera. I explained this to LeVar Ball, father of Lonzo, LiAngelo, and LaMelo Ball. He understood and invited me over to his house in Chino Hills on a weekday in February 2015. I arrived around lunchtime and LeVar invited me out to eat. We went to a local Mexican restaurant and this time I got to see the LeVar that is not on camera talking about his son's accomplishments. I got to learn about LeVar's upbringing along with his agreement with then Chino Hills High School head coach Steve Bayek. LeVar grew up in South Central Los Angeles where he played a lot of pickup basketball. It was this run and gun style of play that he passed on to his boys. It consisted of one brother getting the rebound or ball from a made basket and throwing long outlet passes to his other brothers, filling the lanes on opposite sides of the court, resulting in either a fast break three point shot or a layup. LeVar's teachings emphasize speed and scoring ability over the need to play defense. Just keep running until the other team got tired and increase your chances of open shots. LeVar's philosophy seemed to be working. LeVar told me about his agreement with Coach Bayek. When Lonzo was a freshman, he told the Chino Hills coach to let his boys run and shoot at will. LeVar said, if you do it my way, you will win championships. Make a name for yourself, and when my boys leave, if you want to go to another coaching position, you'll have that opportunity. Coach Bayek agreed, and things ran smoothly. Despite his sometimes outlandish remarks later publicized on major news outlets, LeVar did indeed have a plan all along. He viewed basketball as a source of entertainment, as a fun game that was made to have lots of scoring. He taught his boys that the only bad shot is the one you don't take. LeVar insisted on paying for lunch and we went back to his house in Chino Hills. It was just the two of us. His wife Tina was a physical education teacher and his boys were in school. LeVar walked into his entertainment room which was between the living room and the outdoor basketball court. It was a pool table, a television and shelves filled with basketball and videotapes and DVDs, mostly of his sons, but others with titles basketball fans would recognize. As the boys grew up, LeVar had formed his own AAU team where he was the head coach and his son's friends were the other players. LeVar pops in the first video. A tiny boy dribbles the ball up the court. His shorts are pulled up, yet they hang so low that they nearly touch his ankles. That's because this boy is only in kindergarten. It's LaMelo Ball. LiAngelo is a second grader and Alonzo is a third grader. They are playing a team of sixth graders and it's like watching a mini version of them playing now. Granted, LaMelo doesn't shoot that often, but he is dribbling and is distributing the ball to his brothers who are running the court and scoring. Meanwhile, LaVar is giving me the play-by-play -play in the room and it seems he has the entire game memorized. Watch this next play, Brett, exclaims LaVar. Lonzo rebounds the ball and throws a full court, no look pass to LiAngelo who scores a layup. You had to see it to believe it. The score was 58-7 at halftime. The balls were blowing them out. Let me show you another tape when they were a little older. Lonzo and LiAngelo were in seventh and eighth grade. LaMelo was in fifth grade. They were playing a high school AAU team. Same result. Only now all three boys were shooting more three pointers. You see how these guys are fouling my boys and the rest are not calling it, said LeVar. That's making them mentally and physically tough. I noticed none of his boys ever complained to the ref. They just kept playing. There were a couple of players that came off the bench, but Lonzo, LiAngelo, and LaMelo never stepped off the court. And yet, you can see them wearing the other team down despite the obvious difference in height and physical strength. By halftime, it was another blowout. I know I sound like a LeVar fan right now, but it was true. They were running his system exactly as he said, out conditioning and using their speed and skill to put up massive numbers on offense against older competition. Now, I'm not sure exactly the experience level of these AU teams they were playing, but the age difference was so significant and the way the Ball brothers and their friends were blowing out these older players was so extreme that it was obvious LeVar was onto something. 
LeVar showed me some more videos like this to demonstrate what I had watched was not an anomaly. He also showed me some homemade videos that he shot of the boys when they were toddlers, dunking on a toy hoop he had set up in his basketball court. When LeVar felt he had shown me enough, he said, come on, we're gonna go pick up LaMelo. He gets out of school soon. We got in his big black SUV and headed to the local middle school. LaMelo has potential to be the best out of all my three sons. He's only 14 years old and he hasn't hit his growth spurt yet. He is better at that age than Lonzo and Leangelo were at 14, mainly because he's playing against his older brothers, way older players his whole life. Since he could walk, as you showed me in the video I added, even before that, since he came out of the womb, he'll probably be around 6'7", 6'8", or 6'9". They can't stop him now. How can they stop him at that height? He'll be like magic. LeVar would get hyped up when talking about his boys or to motivate them. For the most part, he talked in a normal tone of voice and seemed down to earth. When it came to his son's basketball, his inflection changed and the big baller brand LeVar took over with never a second of doubt in his voice. In LeVar's perspective at the time, Lonzo was the best son who could be better than Jordan. Leangelo was the strongest and best shooting son and LaMelo had the greatest upside and potential of the three sons. Other than the Jordan comparison, it seems to be an accurate assessment of how his sons play basketball to this day. We pulled up to the side of the school and Melo was outside playing five on five basketball with his eighth grade classmates. Let's watch Melo play for a little bit, said LeVar. He's gonna score every time he has a ball. LaMelo put up a 15 footer and missed. How about that one, I asked. He's just messing around with these kids, said LeVar. Trust me, if he wanted, he could score every time. A few minutes later, LaMelo missed a similar shot, but got his own rebound and scored. I wasn't impressed. The kids weren't playing much defense, and each time, they walked the ball up the court. If LaMelo was going to be a college, much less NBA player, there was no sign of it here. But, as LaVar had pointed out, he was still young. LaVar certainly was hospitable to me, making LaMelo sit in the back seat on the ride back to his home. Back at the house, LaMelo was busy doing his homework while I sat on the couch waiting until Lonzo and Leangelo came home. I showed the boys some of the photos I had taken of one of their games to build a little rapport. They gathered around in my camera smiling and pointing at the photo sequence of Lonzo breaking a defender's ankles. Lonzo smiled but didn't say anything. Lonzo and Leangelo had finished basketball practice with a varsity team at school and now began their second practice in their backyard. Next to the basketball court and pool was an outdoor workout area with a push-up bar, pull-up bar, and two parallel bars for dips. Rather than watch or take photos, I worked out with the boys and it was a good way to build up trust while building some strength. <laughs> as we rotated on each exercise, LeVar did most of the talking as he challenged us to do more and more reps on each set. I started counting in Spanish and I think it caught them off guard. It was a good way to start a new conversation and things were going well. Then we moved to the concrete court where LeVar pushed two large basketball retrieving nets under each hoop. We shot around for a bit to warm up and then we had a shooting competition. It was Lonzo, Lonzo's friend, and me on one team. On the other team, it was Leangelo, LaMelo, and LaMelo's friend. There definitely was a lot of trash talking among us and of course LeVar was doing his play-by-play -play the entire time. I was concentrating on shooting but I could hear LeVar and LaMelo above everyone else. As I recall, my team won more than we lost, mainly because Lonzo hardly ever missed. The trash talking naturally led into a two-on-two -two game. Lonzo and his friend Eli Scott, who's currently a senior captain on the Loyola Marymount basketball team and was first team all Los Angeles his senior year at Chino Hills High School, versus Leangelo and LaMelo. Eli Scott was actually more than a friend. He had transferred to Chino Hills to play basketball and moved in and lived with the Ball family. Now back to the game. So while they played, I watched from the sideline. Leandro and Lamelo had the lead when Lonzo and Eli started coming back. But then it was time for dinner. And so the game stopped as LeVar grilled hot dogs and hamburgers. And then the game continued soon after into the night. 